Welcome to Ready to Mosh, the podcast all about rock, metal and alternative music. I'm Kev P. And I'm Gem G. Each episode will bring you the latest news, talk about new releases and review gigs and festivals that we've been to. There'll be a smattering of guest interviews and a lot of random chat. As well as a podcast, you can also find us on Twitter and Instagram. Just search at Ready to Moshcast. Hello and welcome to episode 33 of Ready to Mosh. Yes, this is episode 33. Well it, done. It is. All the threes. 33. Yeah. And all that news, I suppose, then, isn't it? Yeah. Let's Straight go in. to the news. We've got various bits of festival announcement, gig announcement. Band announcement. Band annou- yeah. Usual kind of stuff, really. So I'll crack on first. And that was, as mentioned last week, there's been another Bloodstock announcement this week. Yeah. So two additions have been added. They are... The final headliner for Saturday night, which is Miss Sugar, and then special guests who I believe are also on Saturday, Halloween. Yeah, the Bloodstock lineup I've been looking at, mm. and it is starting to look really, really good now. It is. I'm kind yeah. of annoyed that I've, well, not annoyed, but you know, because we've got so many festivals that we're mm. doing, and I don't, I mean, I, I won't be able to do the, the Bloodstock one, but it does look really good. Yeah, there's still potential for maybe a Saturday day ticket or Sunday, possibly. Yeah, maybe Saturday, Sunday. It's just having time off for everything, isn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, that's my first one. All right. My first one, uh, Metallica have announced a new tour, a new album, and it's out on April the 4th, I think it is, next year. Uh, the album's called 72 Seasons, and there's a new single off it that would. Well, I'm going to talk about later. And the tour is, um, it's an interesting one. They're doing Holland, France, Germany, Finland, Sweden, Poland, Denmark, Spain, America, Canada, Mexico, in addition to playing download. And it's a very similar theme. So it's two nights, two sets, two different opening acts. And some of the support acts are really good as well, actually. There's Mammoth WVH. Mm Mm-hmm. There's Architects, Five Finger Death Punch, Ice Nine Kills, Pantera, Volbeat, and Greta Van Fleet. Mm, yeah, that sounds quite good, doesn't it? Obviously, they're all not on the same one. Mm. But yeah, so some of the um, some in, there's one in particular. I think it's with it's Five Finger Death Punch, Ice Nine Kills, and Pantera. It might be mm. kind of halfway through. It looks really good. Yeah. Uh, so that's my first bit. Okay, my next one is Mangata Festival have announced their first wave of lineup. Yeah. So this is now going to be held at Rescue Rooms and Red Rooms in Nottingham rather than at Castlebrock Rury as it was this year. So the main headliner is going to be Heart of a Coward. Yeah, which will be really good. Yeah, because we missed them at Bloodstock yeah. this year, didn't we? Also on the lineup, we have got Mastiff, Red Method. I'm a fan of Red, Red Method. Yep, yeah, same. Again, we missed them at Bloodstock, didn't yeah. we? There's also Draconian Rain, Hellfected, another one that I didn't get to see at Bloodstock yeah. this year. So really looking forward to them. Out of Gods, Azazel, Azazel, quite sure on the pronunciation of that one. And Thrasher Wolf, mm. who sound pretty good as well. So That's looking a really good lineup. It's looking a really good lineup so far. They have now sold out of early bird tickets. We've already got our early bird tickets. We have. So... We will definitely be at that one, um, but general sale are on sale, and they're still a really good price for all those bands. So definitely recommend checking that lineup out and going along to that one next year. Yeah, should be good. Uh, Tim Comerford from Rage Against Machine has got yet another side project alongside all the other stuff that he's been in. You know, like uh, Audio Slave, Prophets of Rage, Future User, Whack Rat. <laughs> he's got another one. Mm. This new band is called 7D7D, and they've got a new song out as well, which, again, I'm going to talk about later. So that's another piece. It, it seems there's a, a lot of new, kind of a lot of bands just and that dropping things mm. out of nowhere. Yeah, because the Metallic one was quite unexpected. Yeah, the Metallic one came from nowhere as well. Yeah. My next one is an announcement for Resurrection Fest in Spain. Have you seen this one? No, yeah. I've not seen the lineup. This to me is like a dream lineup with the bonus of it's in Spain, so it's probably going to be nice and warm for definite. All right. It's 28th of June to the 1st of July. Mm. So your headliners are Ghost, Slipknot, and Pantera. Yeah. 
That's good. And then your sub headliners on the main stage. You've got Papa Roach, Architects, Alter Bridge, Power Wolf, mm. and also featuring Behemoth, The Ghost Inside, Fever 333, Motionless in White, and Lacuna Coil. Ooh. Mm. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> and then I'm assuming this has all been done by stage because you've got a little line separating them. So yeah. picking out some who I'm presuming are second stage players. We've got Meshuggah, Amaranth, Carpathian Forest and Perturbator. And then other bands on there include Belfagor, Blind Channel, Sleep Token, Vendored, Butcher Babies, Orbit Culture, Evil, As Everything Unfolds, Bayest, and... I think they're the only ones I'm familiar with, but there's quite a few more on there. Moving down onto the next stage, headline-wise, well, there's six of these, so maybe it's headliners and sub all in the band logos. I'm yeah. not sure. But you've got Hate Breed, Bat... Oh, I can't Bat say. Flag. <laughs> I never knew they were such a hard band to say. Hate Breed, Black Flag, Desicato, Madball, and I cannot read, I think it's Rise of the North Star... And another one that I can't read, unfortunately. And then other bands on that stage include Employed to Serve, Wargasm UK, Ghost Kid, Jesus Peace, who sound interesting. And again, quite a few more that I'm not familiar with. And then your final stage, the only headline I'm aware of or familiar with on there is Alcest, who we saw a few weeks ago. And then Amenra, Mono, Coven, and another one whose logo I can't decipher. Okay. So I've clearly not done my research on this, have I? Um, and then looking across the other bands on that stage, the only ones that I'm familiar with are Sylvain and Florence Black. Mm. But I think on the whole, there's that's 80 bands really, been announced. Yeah, and that's, that's a really good lineup. Really good lineup, isn't it? It's very tempting. That and Grass Pop yeah. are do you, up there. Do you think there's a correlation between, obviously, the ease of movement for kind of like bands and artists? Because there's a lot of those that are outside of the UK. Mm, yeah. Do you think it's a, you know, it's a, it comes down to kind of like a visa thing where it's just mm. easier and cheaper? I think so. I think a lot of people are saying, look at some of these lineups, you'll see similar app download, but it's, like you say, it's easier. Yeah. To stick to the, well, not just the mainland EU, isn't it? Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if this is kind of like part of the fallout that we're going to get, because obviously the mm. costs went up, but. Yeah, it's cost of visas and it's also the... Equipment. Equipment and trying to think, like, the logistics yeah. of the merch, basically. I remember Behemoth saying the reason that they were selling out of merch was because they couldn't bring it because of the weight restrictions on... Certain. Yeah. Certain items, yeah. So, yeah, logistic taxes or whatever the technical words are for yeah, it. Yeah, well, it'll, it'll be I mean, the import tax, won't That's it? the one, import taxes and stuff, uh, yeah. yeah. So that is going to have an impact, I think, particularly smaller bands... As yeah, well. yeah, because mm. I mean that doesn't. That's a shame. We can't get that around a holiday. I know. <laughs> oh, definitely a very good line up there. Okay, uh, I've got another piece and download. Whether it was kind of intentional or not, Andy Coppins kind of said that download's going to be open from Tuesday now. Yes, that was reported in was the Dogshire, Dogshire Live. I Dogshire think. Live, Dogshire yeah. Telegraph, Dogshire Live. Yeah, which they, they've not said to which camping options it's open to but i would imagine it's going to be open to everybody i would imagine it would be everybody yeah yeah and which means you will get your original two days of uh you know acclimatization well you will do if you've got an extra spare day's leave to use yeah that's that's the issue isn't it that's going to be an issue and also people who've already booked hotels not necessarily accounting for that tuesday i mean it's not confirmed yet is it so it's not been confirmed but the fact that he's on you know He's on record as saying it. He is, but does he know that level of detail? Has he made an assumption? (laughs) You don't know, do you? No, that's true. Uh, If it is that, I'm not quite sure what day we'll be going on then. Tuesday. Mm, (laughs) Yeah, what time Tuesday then? First thing in the morning. Yeah. Get there nice and early. Um, Yeah, so I think, yeah, I don't think anything has been confirmed either way. I know moderators on the Facebook groups were saying we need to check this out. Don't change your plans. Don't change your plans yet, yeah. I think he's kind of jumped the gun a little and uh, nobody was expecting him to say that. Yeah. I mean, do you think they're going to do it as like, oh, well, you've paid this, but actually, surprise, we're giving you an extra night. Yeah. There you go. To- Wouldn't surprise yeah. me. Yeah. Because I know some people say, yeah, but it already says five days on the tickets. Well, they're electronic tickets, so that can easily be changed, can't it? Yeah. And it's I don't know. Um, kind of like with that, you know, it's 
like you say, they, it's not just the change of the tickets, but it's the it's the way that they kind of advertise it. Mm. And I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we will. Uh, there is one other piece of news, and that is Guns N' Roses are playing Hyde Park on June the 30th. Oh, is that one of the kind of the series of things they do in the summer, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so like mm. I think they've had like Bruce Springsteen there, Adele's done it, I think. Yeah, they do about two or three, don't they? Yeah. It's kind of almost genre-based, I guess, isn't there? Like a pop one, a rocky one. A... Yeah, and they're all kind mm. of different types of music mm. completely. Yeah, that's what I mean. so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Guns N' Roses have been confirmed for that, and they're also apparently working on a new album. Oh, don't know how I feel about that. Hmm. I mean, I'll listen to it. It yeah. can't take as long as Chinese Democracy did. Say, so. and it's got to be better than that, I'm sure. That oh, wasn't a bad album. You know what I think? No, it was actually all right. It got a lot. It 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 wasn't worth the length of time it took, but it was a it was a decent album. And yeah, with that, that really kind of nails them on. I would have thought for playing Glastonbury. See, I think it'd go either way because they're doing that. Would they do Glastonbury as well? I can't see them doing just one event though. Well, they did this year, didn't they? They came and just did the Wembley dates. How many dates? Was it one night or two? But back to back. Well, well, that's what I mean. So, like, mm. obviously they would have got paid more for doing two nights back-to-back. Yeah. As opposed to one day at Hyde Park doesn't... But that's scheduled the weekend after Glastonbury, so would they be loitering around for a week? There will probably be a few other things mm. crop up. I wouldn't be surprised if Wembley crops up, because it's not going to be used in They wouldn't June. do that on Hyde Park, though, would they? I would have thought... I thought when they did... People did the um, Hyde Park things, I thought they were almost like an exclusive no, thing. No, I don't think they were. No, I mean, I could see him doing Wembley or Twickenham, maybe Glasgow, because then it's the, the opposite end of the country, isn't it? Potentially, maybe Glasgow or Cardiff even. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's feasible, or Edinburgh. Yeah, so they could do any of those, plus mm. Glastonbury. Yeah. Which won't be a bad thing, apart no. from the cretins that are, you know, the sort. I know the sort who were there for Guns and Razors Day and yeah. download. Wrapping up the news then, it's Spotify rap time. Mm-hmm. So, as a podcast, we have our own rap for podcasters. Yeah. So, I'm going to whiz through a few of the top little treats from that that okay. I've spotted. But also, just to mention, because obviously, at the moment, they've literally just been released, so everyone's showing their own Spotify rap. We're going to be looking at our personal Spotify raps in next week's episode. Yeah. So, I think I know what mine's going to look like, but... Ghost, 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 ghost. Maybe. <laughs> you don't know. Um, but anyway, just a few little snippets from the podcasting one, which for five months of being a thing, yep. I don't think it's too bad. So we've done, as this was done, we've done 28 episodes. So it was done about a month so it's ago, about wasn't a month it? Behind, yeah. So it's about five months of us. For yep. five months. 1,100 ish minutes. Is that what that we've that done? We've or recorded. That we've recorded, okay. Yeah, over the 28 episodes. And we've been listening to in six countries. That's Quite Which a good one. Blows my little brain. Yeah. And we are in the top ten podcast for fifty seven people. And that's just on Spotify, isn't I'm it? I'm just on Spotify, which again blows my tiny little mind. The listener personality of us is the enthusiast. Oh. So which means apparently our listeners are super fans. When their favourite podcast releases a new episode, they're among the first to know, going above and beyond to show their support. Oh. So thank you for thank that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Give um, yourselves a pat on the back. Yes. Absolutely. And we are in the 30% most shared globally. Well, how the hell we manage that? <laughs> Neither do I. But again, thank you if you shared us. Yeah. <laughs> keep again, sharing it. Keep sharing us. But yeah, again, for five months of it. Yeah, I think that's, that's good. A bad little stat. And apparently our top episode was episode 13, which was our Mangata Festival review. And we had 327% more listeners compared to our average week during the week of that release. So. Oh, that's interesting. That's yeah. really interesting, Again, yeah. thank you very much if you've listened to that one, or any of the episodes. Yeah. Mm. So that was actually the smallest festival we did. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So we had, so there was more more of you guys engaged with that one? It was. That's Possibly interesting. Possibly, because there was less coverage of it. Obviously, a lot of people talk about Download and Bloodstock and that's true, yeah. other bigger events. So, yeah. Hmm. Interesting to see what happens with Mangata next year. Yeah. Because, yeah, we'll be having a review of that one as well. I think they're the main bits and bobs. It will be shared on Instagram and Facebook and, you know, I'll share the, all the, the visuals of all that info will be shared about. So they're probably already on there before this episode comes out. But yeah, thank you for contributing to all of that. And yeah, that wraps the news up.
Right, review time. You sure? I'm sure. <laughs> Why would I not be sure? <laughs> you just looked a bit unsure. No, absolutely You've got positive. my confused face on. <laughs> so as we, uh, as we were saying, bef- well, as I said before, I've got a couple of uh, singles to talk about. And just very, kind of very quickly, it's been a pretty sn- snow release, slow release. It's not had any snow yet. No, but it's been a, <laughs> it's been a slow release week. Yeah, I think we've looked ahead as well, haven't we? I think pretty much this time of year, there's not starts a lot to wind of, down, yeah. particularly album wise. Not a lot coming out, but we'll keep our eye out for what's there. Yep. So my first one, as I said earlier, is Metallica. So they've got a new single out called Lux Turner. Yeah, I have listened to this too, actually. Oh, what did you think? Well, I'll let you go first, because it's your review. (laughs) I know, but I'd I'd like to know what what you think as well. So um, I thought it was really catchy. It didn't appeal to me straight away, but it is a bit of a grower. And it seems more thrash than the recent albums they've kind of done, Mm. you know, when you look at things back like Death Magnetic and things like that. And, yeah, some kind of like big power chord chorus, and it's kind of like... It's not old Metallica, but mm. it's kind of more thrashier roots. Again. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Although it, I liked it straight away rather than it being a grower. Oh, okay. Definitely catchy though. I kind of had it on just on a loop for, I don't know, a few rounds of it, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, it was straight in my head. The chorus was. And yeah, definitely not, yeah, like, not old, old Metallica, but definitely that Quicker, way yeah. inclined. Yeah. If you know what I mean, the swingometers going back to the 80s. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's mm. a decent. Uh, single, so I'd be yeah. interested to see if the rest of the album's kind of the same tone. Yeah, yeah, definitely looking forward to the album. Are you uh, doing your other single next? I can or? do my other single yeah, if you want me to. Do that, and then I'll do my album. We've not even said right. what we've got, have we? Two singles, one album. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my other single is "Capitalism" by Seven D Seven D, which, mm-hmm. as I said earlier, is Tim Comford's new band. Yeah, and this is the well, I wasn't expecting it. Uh, Either kind of like for Tim to do another band or for this single. But this single, imagine kind of like the Doors meets Nine Inch Nails, mm. sort of like the you know the uh, Year Zero era. Yeah, it's kind of it's sort of like that. I can't imagine that. But when you listen to it, you'll go. I get what you mean there. Okay. Yeah, honestly, mm. it'll it, you will think Doors Nine Inch Nails. Mm. Uh, it's, yeah, it's really difficult to explain. Again, it's quite catchy. But I don't, and the, the video is a bit weird as well. It's almost like a nineteen eighties. You know, kind of like how nineteen eighties punk bands used to do sort of like pitch or you know, like you'd get punk bands doing pictures of things like um, riots and invasions and mm. all that yeah. kind of stuff. It's it's a bit like that. Okay. Yeah, it's a bit odd. A bit odd. A bit odd. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Odd. Uh, I quite I, I do quite like it, but. Mm. It'd be interesting to see what else they put out. I was going to say, is this kind of planned as to be from an album? I've not seen anything about an album. I've just seen okay. this as a kind of like as a one-off single release. So yeah. I've not read anything okay. about anything future for that. Mm. Okay, I'll give it a listen at some point and try and work out <laughs> that combination. Right. So Gem's just played the song that we've been talking about. Mm-hmm. What do you think? What do you think? Think about my comments to it. I think your comments are all definitely valid. It is. That era of Nine Inch Nails. I wasn't getting doors at first, but then about a minute in, the doors appeared. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, odd. I don't yeah. know if I like it. I, I, I really do. I, I think it's really cool. Yeah. It's different. Hmm. Maybe we should do that more with the reviews for this. You know, if we review a single, maybe we, that's what we should start yeah. to do. Or even an album, pause. Or an album, pause, it. listen yeah. to it, and see what the other thinks. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to go on to your review now? Yeah. Okay. So this is actually, it's already been out. Over a week now, this came out on the 18th of November, so it's not a brand new release. It is Candlemas's latest album, Sweet Evil Son. Mm. This is actually their 13th album. Oh, Jesus Christ. I didn't so know they've done that. They've many. been around since the 80s, yeah. Again, it's one of those bands I've always heard of and never listened to, and I've no idea why. Mm. So I've got no previous to compare it to. For what I've read, it is more like their modern sound. So they have evolved a bit and they've had different singers they've got the original singer back now for this album as was the last album i believe yeah um yeah it's it's really good Mm -mm. it's kind of theatrical doom metal i would say so obviously their origins are within doom metal yeah but there's definitely more a kind of theatrical almost power metal spin to this i think Mm. um so you've got quite theatrical powerful vocals there's loads of kind of epic riffs kind of doom metal chords and then some really cool solos 
twiddling through it. Okay. Not listen to it as much as I'd hoped to, just because I've not had enough time really to properly go through everything in detail. But there's a few songs that stood out. So the opener is Wizard of the Vortex. Mm -hmm. That's a really big intro. Just to say as well, actually, most of the tracks are around six minutes long average. So it means 10 tracks in total and the final track is just an outro of about a minute and a half. So they're doing about an hour. Yeah, I don't know what the full length is, actually. I don't think it's quite that long. But the second track, Sweet Evil Sun, that's actually a single. That's only around the three, three and a half minutes, I think. Oh, right, the, the, yeah. the traditional single so, length, yeah. yeah. But that's probably my favourite track, the title one. It's just really catchy. It's got a really cool video. Kind of heavy but melodic. Mm. So I definitely recommend you have a listen to that track, if nothing else, off the album. Angel Battle, that's another quite doomy melodic one. That's probably the heaviest track on the album. Mm. Kind of slow and ploddy, but really good. Okay. There is Black Butterfly. Um, that's almost kind of operatic with the backing vocals, quite epic. And then there's like really heavy riffs and a really long solo piece in the middle. Another good one. There's a duet on When Death Sighs with Jenny Ann Smith from Avatarian. That's quite a kind of build, it kind of builds up really big. Okay. So kind of, again, it's like a slow big, slow begin, slow, slow building begin. chugging. Not slow begins. <laughs> slow begins. That's a whole different panto. Devil Voodoo, that's quite almost groove like, slow. Sounds like it sounds like a sort of Jimi Hendrix groove. Yeah. It does actually, yeah, Voodoo, Devil Voodoo. Um another one I really like is track eight, which is crucified. That's almost got kind of a quite thrashy feel to it. It's quite fast. Yeah, you think that's gonna be one of mm. the other singles then or possibly. But yeah, on the whole, really good. I would definitely recommend giving that a listen. All right, I might. Yeah. I'm, I think I'm struggling to find new stuff that I want to listen yeah, to, so, so I might give that a, a shout. A bit of classic Swedish doom metal. Go and um, yeah, go and give that a listen to. I'll mark that out of ten. I'd probably say seven or eight. Probably oh. eight actually. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'll give that a listen. Do then. give it a listen, and oh, it's got really cool artwork as well for the album. Oh yeah, you showed, you showed me the, art- that, you showed like me the artwork. Skull, yeah. purple background. All right. So um, I think that's is it, that the reviews? It? I think that's reviews done for this week. Rock the Week time. Looking back on the week of the 5th to the 11th of December in rock and metal history, I've got six little bits to go through this week. Go on, blast through your bits. Right. Three of them are all from the 6th of December, which is obviously a a popular day in rock and metal history. Mm -hmm. So the oldest one, we'll go with that first, is way back in 1969. Led Zeppelin debuted in the US charts with a whole lot of love. It got to number four, and it was the first of six US top 40 singles that they had. And did you know that they never actually released any singles in the UK? No, I didn't know that. Neither did I. I was like, really? I would have thought a whole lot of love got released, surely. Apparently not. So, I mean, it might have made it into charts in terms of listenings, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But the next one from the 6th, 2004, is that Motley Crue announced their reunion stroke farewell tour with... (laughs) Tommy Lee returning to the band and said reunion farewell tour continued on until 2015 when they had their final farewell tour. And oh, look what's happening now. Well, after they were legally, after they signed a a legal (laughs) contract saying we will never play again. Yeah. What do you know? Yeah. There they are, currently in the midst of another tour. And then my final one from the 6th of December in 2012, Metallica allowed themselves to be on Spotify for the first time. Ah. So a metallic anniversary. I think this is now an appropriate time for me to put mine in. Okay, well, I've not finished. But I know you've not finished, but I, because of that, I think mine kind of oh, fits does it? nice. It links to it nicely. About this, but I'll go on then. Okay, so uh, same date range, obviously. 2012, mm-hmm. yeah. Back in Black got to number one in the UK rock and metal singles charts and was there for four weeks. Yeah. And... It achieved this. Oh, and it also reached number 27 in the UK singles chart, which is the first time it had ever been entered there. Yeah. And that was because of the band's music being available on iTunes. Oh. So they, they kind of coincide. No, they don't coincide. They It's almost a mirror. Yeah, that's ACDC. Yeah, I know yeah. it's ACDC. But what, what I'm saying is it's yeah. the same. Oh, okay. It's the same reasoning. Yeah, that's weird because that didn't come up. I didn't notice that being on the news. Oh, hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that was my one little thing. Like when you started saying about band music being available, I was like, "Hang on, <laughs> have you got ACDC too?" Uh, yeah, and that's what it was. Oh, it was all down to iTunes yeah. availability. 
As you were. then. <laughs> Although I suppose if that got to the charts, then that would have been released the week before, wouldn't it? Do you know what I mean? As in them yes. being on ITV. Ah. So maybe next week Metallica might be on the charts <laughs> because they've been on Spotify. Well, well, that was still at number one for X amount of weeks. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm just predicting the future of the weeks. It's not that one. <laughs> no. Okay, right. Back to me then. Back to you. Right. So sticking with Metallica then, whilst we're on a theme, 8th of December 2013, Metallica became the first band to play on all seven continents. So they played inside a dome at the Argentine Antarctic base in Carlini. Okay. And it was known as Freeze All, the show. Oh, of course it Obviously, was. Obviously, yeah, I think it was released kind of as a documentary and yeah. all of that. After, the audio was transmitted to competition-winning fans from Latin America via headphones. The whole shebang was sponsored by Coca-Cola, and they were the second ever band to actually play inside that venue. The first one being a band of musical scientists. Well, that can make sense. Yeah, it does, really. So, yeah, that was that one. 8th of December 2004, that was when Dimebag Daryl was shot. If you remember that yes. one. Yeah, so one of five people killed at a damage plan show in our Rosa Villa Club in Columbus. I remember that. Yeah, so do I. Can't believe it's that long ago. Mm. I know we often say that on Rock the Week, but yeah. yeah. And then my final one is actually just a birthday shout out because I don't think we normally do these, but anyway, just wanted to wish happy birthday to Frank Carlton Serafino Ferrana Jr., aka Nikki Six. Yeah. Who is 64 on the 11th of December. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't expecting that one. No, I just spotted it and I thought, well, what a name for me to try and pronounce. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I was thinking about Nicky Six's name because he legally changed it when he was really young as well, didn't he? Youngish, yeah. Yeah, okay. And there lies Rock the Week for this week. Live review time now. So on Friday night, we went to see Bad Flower and Dead Poet Society at the Rescue Rooms in Nottingham. We did. It was a sold out gig. We didn't realise that until we were halfway there checking out the set times. Yeah. And to be honest, they could have probably done Rock City. I don't, it's weird limbo, isn't it, between Rescue between Rooms, rescue and, Rock rooms City. and Rock City? Between Rescue Rooms and Rock City, yeah. Yeah. But possibly, yeah. With the way, I mean, we saw them last in. It was 2019, because they were the last band I saw before lockdowns. Ah, uh, yeah. So November 2019. Yeah, so we saw them there, and that was also sold out. Mm. But that was at the Bodega, which is half the size of Rescue Rooms anyway. Yeah, and I think with those ones, I think they'd announced the tour and then played Download, and we just happened to spot them after Download and got tickets, but I think it sold out pretty quickly after Download, didn't it? Yeah, it did. I watched them at download, and I think you were queuing for merch. I think we've said this before. Yeah, I saw the end of them. Yeah. Yeah, we got there about quarter past six, didn't we? About 15 minutes before doors, and it was a big, the biggest queue I've seen at rescue rooms, I think. It's the biggest I've seen for a while, for that kind of time. Mm. Normally, It's not normally that busy. But we still got a good spot, didn't we? Yeah, managed to get a decent spot, yeah. smack in the centre of the stage up on the balcony. Mm-hmm. We were there. Well, we didn't move from there, did we? We didn't, no. Shall we just talk about merch first? Yes. Because that was a new one. I said to you as a joke when we went in, let's play the game of where's the merch today because it can be anywhere in rescue rooms. We've known it three different places and on Friday it was in a new fourth spot. Yeah, but it was in a spot that was better. It did work better. It was kind of in the upstairs bar area. Yeah. So, I mean, the main bonus of it was the lights were on so you could actually see what you were buying. Yeah. Rather than it being in a dark corner and you're kind of squinting trying to make out what's what. And unfortunately the merch didn't have... Any tour dates on? Because no. I'm a sucker for a tour date top. Yeah, I went to York, didn't I, to get it? And there were four different T-shirts. No, five, actually, Bad Flower T-shirts, I think. Four, anyway. No, I think there were three T-shirts and a sweatshirt, because the hoodie sold out. And a beanie. And I just asked the guy, I mean, normally, you know they've got tour dates on, because they'll have the back print pinned up as well, won't they, so you can actually see. And they didn't have yeah. any with tour dates on. So I just got a plain one. Like a just a, a, print, a front, front print, print. Yeah. Uh, just a bad flower t shirt because I didn't get one last time we saw them, but you did. Yeah. But I kind of get why they've not got tour dates on when you think how many postponements have been over the last few years. 
Yeah, and it's a big investment for them to lay out as well, isn't it? To it do is, the especially, UK. say, when they're coming over from America to do it. And just, I was just thinking back to when we saw Wayward Sons and that was postponed to, was it March we went? But they were still selling the original T-shirts with the dates on from November, selling them off cheaper because yeah. they got them printed. So I absolutely get why some bands may not be printing tour dates on. Yeah. Makes it, sense. It, for, for some bands, it does make sense. Mm. And it, it, it's not like they were doing a huge run of shows. No. It's only a handful of shows, mm. so. But yeah, the, having the merch upstairs makes it a lot easier. You know, you're right next to the bar. Yeah. And there's more room, so you're not kind of clogging up the dance floor or the bar downstairs or... Yeah, that's the other thing. It gave that little bit more floor space downstairs. Yeah. It increased floor space from where they've had it in the other three positions. Made a lot of sense. Mm. I think the only downside could be if people don't realise it's up there. You know when it's like downstairs and you walk in and you see it straight away, it hits you, oh yeah, I'll go and get my merch. Some people yeah. might forget about it. But having said that, I nipped the toilet after a gig finished and came out and there was a lot of people queuing up. There was a lot of people queuing up, So that was a good up, yeah. thing. They obviously just waited till the end, then get the merch, which a lot of people do anyway because it saves you carrying it, holding it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I just wore mine. Yeah, I, I like to get in early, get my own. I know yeah. it's done. You get what you just want. Just because I've missed out before. <laughs> yeah, you learn these things, don't you? Yeah. Right. Anyway. On to the first band of the night. And yeah, I said to you as well this, it was strange going to a gig with only two bands because a lot we've been to lately have had two supports. Yeah. And the main act. So that was a weird one, only two bands. It just... Yeah, it did seem a little odd. It, the whole show itself didn't feel any shorter, but it just seemed a bit like, oh, there's only two bands. <laughs> I don't think the show would have been any shorter. No. I think it would have been getting on for three hours. Yeah, but yeah, Dead Poets Society. I hadn't listened to them loads beforehand. I listened to them a little bit on the day, and I think when they first got announced as support, so I kind of vaguely knew what to expect. Yeah, I had been listening to them, when obviously when they were announced anyway, and they kind of fell off my radar a little. Mm. I think because it was so long ago as well, because we bought the tickets back in March, yeah. and I think they were added on pretty soon after. Mm. And yeah, like you say, it just seems to have been a long time coming, so they fell off the radar a bit. Yeah, and the songs that they've put out, I'd forgot how many I actually knew. Mm. Yeah, when they were playing them. When they were playing them, I was like, oh yeah. And they they had a lot of support in there. It was pretty full when they came on, and a lot of people knew them. Yeah, knew the songs as well, so that was good. Yeah, and I think they actually sound better live than they do on an album. Yeah, I agree as well. They're very bass prominent live, I thought. Yeah, and I, I think the the whole set was just really, really strong. Mm, yeah, they definitely came across heavier live. Yeah, mm. yeah, a lot heavier. Yeah. Uh, the, the the stuff that they've got is definitely does seem more toned down mm. and probably more commercially viable. Yeah, with it being toned down compared mm. to what they were doing. Yeah, I definitely prefer them live. Yeah, so mm. there was a bit of a strange moment, kind of like, I don't know, maybe halfway through the set. Oh, yeah, about halfway through, someone got his life made, didn't he? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think, did the was it the lead singer shout out, has anyone seen us before? before? And obviously some people did, some people didn't. Yeah. And this guy shouted out, it's my first time. Yeah. And then asked him if he knew... I think he said, oh, that's nice or something, didn't he? Yeah. I'm pleased for you, something like that. And he said, are you a fan? Do you know the music? And he's like, yeah. yeah. Can you sing? Yeah. Do you want to come up on stage? Yeah. And he did. And he, just, yeah, he, he kind of got, he basically went over the railing, managed to get up on the stage with his, still with his drink. Got his drink on. Refused to a, let go yeah. of his drink, yeah. I think the, the bass player took the drink off him. Yes. Yeah. No, no, it was the lead singer. Was it? Yeah. Okay, I saw the bass player hand his drink back after. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, put his drink down. <laughs> yeah, and they played the next track. I can't remember what the, what the track was. I can't off the top of my head now. I meant to look. I did film some of it, so yeah. we'll pop that up on Instagram, etc. cetera, soon. Uh, but yeah, he did a good job of it, I thought. Yeah, he did all right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, it, I think it could have been one of those that could have gone could absolutely have gone either way. Yeah. But yeah, it just like a, a really good duet, really, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't do too bad. I mean, he almost forgot to take his clothes with him because he took two T-shirts off that he'd got One was on. a coat, wasn't it? He'd got a was, coat. It, was it a coat it was or was like it a hoodie? It was a jacket, I think, uh, and a T-shirt. So yeah. he stripped down to a vest. I think people were wondering <laughs> yeah, how far he was guy? going. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, it took him a, a little while to negotiate himself back into the crowd after. Oh, just a bit, yeah. Which I think is why they missed off their last song, because they said they got two songs left, but yeah. actually by the time they'd finished Pissing the second to last one, down, yeah. they were like, actually, and it was 10 to, which was when they were due off. So yeah. I think we lost a song because of that, but it was fun. Yeah, it was different. Yeah. He, uh, he got a drumstick and some plectrums out of it. He well. did as well, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. The Poets Society, I thought, were excellent. Yeah, definitely would watch again yeah. at a festival or whatever. Yeah, or, or 
if they're back over here at some point touring again. Yeah, I definitely recommend you give them a watch as well if you see them out and about. Next up. Next up. Bad Flower. Bad Flower. Quick shout out to the music in between. That's the first time I've ever heard Jimmy Buffett played between sets. At a gig. Yeah, I've never heard that before. <laughs> I true. seem to be the only person singing along, but surely everyone knows Five O'clock Somewhere. It's a classic. Yeah, yeah Bad Flower. <laughs> yeah, Bad Flower. I thought were excellent. Mm-hmm. And again, I think their stuff's better live than it is. Just yeah. lis- just listening to it isn't as good as the live experience of watching Bad Flower. Yeah, I think some of it is. They have the kind of the heaviest the heaviest stuff, stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they did start with um, one of my favourites, which was Fuckboy. Yeah, that's one of the new ones, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think the way that they laid the set list out as well was quite interesting because they kind of did a new one, one off their first EP, a couple of new ones, and they had kind of like a patch of the first album, didn't they? Yeah. Clustered all together. So it was kind of weirdly structured, if you know what I mean. Not often it's kind of a mix and match, isn't it, between releases, but it was almost a clear, OK, I'm sick patch in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> sick patch. <laughs> Yeah, I, I thought the yeah the, the set list that they put together was excellent. Mm, it's, yeah, it's kind of what I'd have wanted to hear. Yeah, it's a really good mix. Yeah, there was nothing that they didn't play that I wanted to hear. Have I said that right? There's nothing missing that I'd want them to play. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, and but again, that that kind of had some interesting moments in it as well. Do you remember the plastic sign? Oh, the plastic sign when they were playing Anna. Yeah, the um, from the album artwork, wasn't it? For OK, I'm sick. Yes. That kind of got passed through the crowd, so I assume it's just a standard prop every night. I don't think it was. It I not? saw somebody walk in. I'm sure I saw somebody walk in with it. Oh, maybe a fan brought it in then. Yeah, that, oh, okay. I I seem to remember somebody walking in with that. Oh, I didn't spot that. But, um, yeah, that, that was great. It would have looked great, but Josh held the sign upside down. <laughs> no, he held it back to front. Did he? Back to front, yeah. yeah it was back but... to front, so it, you couldn't really... Unless you knew what it yeah, was. Yeah, because it was like stencil, know. wasn't it? But yeah, it was a plastic stencil. Yeah, I thought it was there. Yeah. There seemed to be... Oh, actually, there was a, a sound issue on his mic, wasn't there? On, I can't remember which song it was. Fairly early on, Josh's mic stopped working. Yes. And so he had to jump onto the second backing vocal mic. Yeah, and and work from there. Yes, but as someone in the crowd pointed out, it's a very good transition. <laughs> oh, Jesus, yeah. <laughs> yeah, someone um, shouted that out, much to Josh's amusement. Yeah. You know, being a musician. Yeah. yeah, it's like, well, we're professionals. You've paid to be here. What do you expect us yeah. to do? Yeah, should we stop everything? Yeah. And... On that note, actually, there was a lot of crowd interaction with both bands, wasn't there? There was, yeah. Yeah, which is always good. Yeah, sometimes sometimes it can go one of two ways, but I, but it did kind of go yeah. really well. It's always a problem with smaller venues. Mm. Sometimes it really works. Sometimes it just yeah, it just doesn't. But yeah, it did it did for that night. Mm. There was somebody taken ill as well halfway through. Oh, it was towards the end, actually, wasn't oh, was it? it? Towards the yeah, end? it's quite towards the end. I thought it was about, about three way. quarters, I think. Yeah, yeah, uh, at the front. I think it was. Yeah, it looked like it was just dehydration. Yeah, quite possibly because it was probably quite hot down at the front. Yeah, but what was really good as well is that it was obvious there was a problem, and the mm. band spotted it and then just yeah. stopped. Because that doesn't always happen, no. actually. Because I know when I was there for Wargasm, someone was in a similar spot. Yeah, because um, that's the problem with the rescue rooms; is it's kind of. Only one, one way, way you can in, get out because yeah. it's up, you're up against the wall, aren't you? Yeah. And you could see someone from that corner being pulled out, but the show was still going on. Yeah, which, which I don't know if they were aware of that or yeah. not, because obviously they're quite full on the wall, guys. But yeah, it got spotted by the band. They made sure they were got out okay. Yeah, and also got some more water brought out for people. As yeah, well. That, well, that's what I liked as well because that was their own stuff, wasn't yeah, it? Where they were just bringing yeah. out. It's like, right, who needs some water? Mm. <laughs> which I mean, you would have thought the rescue rooms would kind of be prepared for that. You kind of say that, but there isn't a lot of room between that barrier and the stage at rescue rooms to store anything right at the front, is there? There's hardly any room. Well, no, not at the front, but like through the, the side, side entrance, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it was good to see the band stop and, you know, make sure somebody was all right. Yeah. So that was good. The other incident was, I can't remember what song it was again, but Josh had kind of gone into the crowd and then he kind of disappeared off the stage yeah. and then the guitarist followed and then the bass player followed and then we were left with about a five-minute drum solo. Yeah, so I don't know what happened there. So I don't know if something got detached from him from going in the crowd and he yeah. had to get, I don't know, Re- like get, re- get mics back up again. Came off and then the rest of the band were like, well, we don't know what to do, let's just leave the yeah. drummer to it. But, so we had a, yeah. it was quite an insane drum set. It was actually. actually, and he just kept going until the, and the band came on and carried on the same song. So yeah. <laughs> it all worked out. Yeah, that was, that was um, pretty mental. We had an impromptu champagne supernova medley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Um, it was at the start and the end of Mother Mary. Yeah. Which, which I, was, I did not see that coming yeah, at all. No, I say impromptu. Maybe it is something they do. I wasn't expecting it, though. No, I, I didn't see it coming. Um, but it worked I don't well. Think, yeah, I don't yeah. think I've seen them play it before like no, that. No, I've not noticed. And that's, what, third time now? Yeah. But, it, yeah, it, the the guitars between the two and the vocals just kind of, it really worked. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, some other mirror was kind of spliced in between mm. the two. Uh, sorry, in between the start and end of Champagne Supernova. Yeah. <laughs> Different, but, yeah, yeah that's yeah. how it worked. But one thing that I will say that was really funny is they were the weakest pits I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, wasn't it during the Poet Society, was it? They had... They That's when it started and they did yeah, some... Yeah, they kind of from, cleared the space and, and we were right. expecting a massive, well, mosh-up in the middle and it was just kind of a little happy bounce. Yeah, <laughs> and it was the same It was the same for Bad Flower. Yeah. It was happening for Bad Flower. I was like, it's not a pit. No. What are you doing? You're, you're jumping is. around and just having a nice friendly time. Yeah. It's not quite the same. I did say to you that last time we were watching pits from a height, it was a cradle was and a they shit. were the complete opposite extreme pit-wise. <laughs> they were fucking so. insane. Yeah. yeah. yeah as people it, having a nice time. Yeah, I, I suppose <laughs> it, it's just... You know, when you're used to seeing kind of like machine head slip knot. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, and then, you know, cradle and then you get a happy bouncy pit. Yeah. So it's not a pit. Mm. Any particular song highlights for you? Uh, well, Funk Boy, as I already yeah. said, uh, was, you know, it's one of my favourite. Mm. Johnny Wants to Fight. Yeah. Uh, I love that one. Family, mm. Girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think it was just a solid set for me. Like you said, it, there's nothing... They didn't play that I really wanted. Yeah. I was a bit disappointed White Noise was the second song on because that's my favourite Bad Flower song and I was like, I've played this already. Yeah. Save it towards the I, end. I was a bit, yeah, I was kind of like that with Footboy. <laughs> yeah. But Footboy is a great one to get people yeah. going. I had a feeling that they might come on to that anyway somehow. Yeah. But I think 30 as well. I like that one. Th- yeah, 30. That was what they finished with. They... Make, it makes me feel old, but... Yeah, I know. Poor little Josh complaining that he's 30. Yeah. Oh, the shame. <laughs> Also, I think because of the few little bits of stoppages as well, they were kind of running out of time. So rather than go off and come back on for the encore, they just stood on stage and said, pretend we're going off. Pretend we're going off. Pretend we're back. Pretend we're back. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And they played the last two songs, which were Girlfriend and But you know what? I'd, I'd sooner have a band that just does that anyway. Yeah, I've always I'd, said that. I'd, I just... You know, if, if they want to stop what they're doing and then just go, look, this way we'd normally piss off. But yeah. we're not going to do. Instead, we're going to play... Instead of us pissing off for like five minutes, mm. we're going to play an extra song instead. <laughs> just like, yeah, yeah I love and that. I've seen people do that. I can't think so. recently. Tool do it. Yeah, they just don't encore. They don't encore. They don't even pretend, like, do they? they just... No, it's like we're going to do it all. Yeah. We're going to do a set and it's mm. going to last the time it should last. Yeah. And that's it. Manic Street Preachers never did encores. Did they not? No. Just what's the point? Yeah. But yeah, it, it was a really fun gig. It was, yeah. Really yeah, enjoyed I enjoyed it. it. Very much so. Very good live band. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what you want to say. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. You'd think by now we'd know how to start and end different segments, yeah. wouldn't you? <laughs> that was that. Yeah. Right, it's recommendation time. And this week it is a band called Tail Gunner. They have a very kind of Maiden-esque sort of sound. I, yeah, I would agree a with that. A lot of Maiden maybe. kind of guitars, yeah. some kind of like real good sort of like power metal. Yeah, kind of classic 80s Yeah, cla- well, rock. just kind of classic, classic sort rock. of sound to yeah. it. Got, yeah, they got some great solos on there, some really good vocals, mm. and they are definitely worth listening to. They're signed to Fire Flash Records, which is part of Atomic Records, so a subsidiary label of that, and they've got bands like Bloody Wood, Meshuggah, Opeth. So, yeah. you know, potentially big things mm. kind of expected from these yeah. guys. They've not been around that long? No, I think around about six months, mm-hmm. roughly. Um, but they've done a couple of UK tours, and I think some of the dates on that sold out. And they've got some, well, a couple of upcoming dates that we're aware of. They're playing the Tap and Tumbler in Nottingham on the 7th of January. Yeah. And they're also at Call of the Wife, Call of the Wild Festival in Lincoln on the is it around about the twenty sixth of May yes, that weekend. Yeah, it's the end of end of May. Yeah, it's that weekend. Yeah, and they are potentially at the Stone Dead Festival. They've made it to the last ten. Yeah, so they're in the, the final selection for that. The, the heat song. Yeah, the opening poll. So they got through the heat that they were in that was voted for by the fans, and the next round is kind of final selection by 
the I think it's Stonedead volunteers, don't they? It is, yeah. Do that. So potentially there, and I'm sure they'll have a lot more dates coming up next year as well. So just keep an eye out on their social media, see where they're going to be playing. Yeah, I, I would actually like to go and see them when they play the tap, to be honest. Yeah. Definitely. So very achievable kind of gig for us. So mm-hmm. if you still haven't listened to them yet, I don't know why not. They've got a new EP out and it's called Crash Dive. There are some fantastic singles on that. I think there's about three off it. Yeah. And yeah, if, you, if you're a big kind of Maiden fan, that sort of style of music, you'll absolutely love it. Yep, so go check that out. And they've also got a album coming out early next year. Yep. Scheduled in. Uh, don't really have any more details than that at the moment. But yeah, looking forward to that as soon as it comes out. Right, well that's another episode done. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter at Ready to Moshcast. We're also on YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok at Ready to Mosh. Give us a five star review on whatever platform you're listening on. Just be nice. Yes, and thank you for listening. Make it start, Moog.